Hey, what's up everyone? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Oh, I thought I would throw you a curveball and unpack the $1,000 Vizio Elevate. A 5.1.4 soundbar system and winner of a 2020 Red Dot Design Award. Just an unboxing and an overview today. If you're new to the channel, look for a full review or fight video with another bar in the future sometime. Vizio is not being coy about which features it thinks you should know about. Okay, let's see if Vizio can pack a box. First, we got an accessories box. Gonna commend Vizio on this. This seems a lot more sane than having several baggies scattered all over the place. Making fun of you, SN11RG. Digging further. Next we've got, well, I live in Michigan, gonna guess two small blocks of Mackinac Island fudge, or less likely, just looking at size, the surround rear speakers. Guess we'll see when we unwrap. Hmm, Vizio is giving us a we got you paper with some useful pointers on how to set up the system and clearly presented contact info. Next, we got our sub. I just don't see what else it could be. And finally, I'm quite sure the unbearably braggy soundbar with its. The fudge blocks and or surrounds got nothing even close to that. Holy that's a lot of wires. All right, we got a 3.5 millimeter to two male RCA adapter. This is all you need to know to understand that Vizio has made a quirky soundbar product. Next, we have your run of the mill 3.5 millimeter aux cable, but what is it doing in this box? The quirkiness compounds. Oh good, our soundbar system, which we buy to reduce wires, has provided us with cable management strips. Next, we got our bar mounting hardware. For usual, the pieces needed to mount this thing onto the wall are missing. Fairly normal. This is the sixth bar I've reviewed. Five of the bars provided mounts, and only the JBL bar so far has provided screws to mount to the wall. Next, our HDMI cable. You see, some cords require more protection than others. Everyone knows this. This extremely cheap optical cable that you should not be using also requires special protection. You've got a user guide and a wall mount guide, and this bar does have a standard one-year warranty. We've got two power cords, a rather long one and a shorter one. You can decide how to pair these with the bar and sub to best meet your logistical challenges. What the hell are these? Well, what you have is a wired connection to the surrounds from the sub. Though don't worry, they are color-coded. There is a lot of cord here. Just seeing these, you have a decision to make on whether you can tolerate and hide all this wire. Guessing this revelation about the wires to the surrounds is not a good one. Last, we have our remote and batteries. A very cheap sounding remote, very poor sound quality, zero low end. It does have a display on it and some kind of memory game on the back. So a little extra entertainment value there. We'll dive more into this memory game a little later on. On to our sub. Vizio is being very coy with the measurements, weight, and wattage. Instead, they offer you a system max sound pressure level, which is 107 decibels, and a frequency range, which is 30 hertz to 20,000 hertz. 30 hertz is kind of a braggy number for your system's low end. The JBL Bar 9.1, also $1,000, had a very good precise sub that I liked quite a bit that only went down to 34 hertz. These subs are always very bland. This one is no exception. Other than the back and bottom, the only thing that breaks up the canvas of dark gray is the Vizio logo on the top right corner. On the back, you have a port for power, a button for connection purposes, and your ghastly connections to the left and right rear surrounds. Also, you have your obligatory gaping air intake hole. Don't look at it too long. It might evoke despair. On the bottom, you have your four legs with rubber coating on the feet and an eight inch driver. Looks cool, sounds subby, though the JBL has a much softer landing.
Wow, they really are the surrounds. Not much to say here other than it's hard to communicate just how much smaller and lighter these surrounds are than their peers. You have a plastic grill that spans the top and front, which covers the top and forward woofer. These surrounds don't have that extra hardware weight that would come from being independently powered or converting a digital wireless signal to analog. The wired connection is on the back of these speakers. Oh, here we go. On my cue, didn't wait. The sound bar, this is an important thing. It won a Red Dot Award. Have I mentioned that? Why? Well, because of its anodized aluminum speaker housing and its rotating speakers on the end, which can mutate the bar from let's say a 5.0 channel bar with five ear level channels to a 3.0.2 bar converting the left and right ear level channels to height level channels. You can set the speaker position manually or have it rotate automatically. So for instance, it will rotate up as you switch from music to 3D audio, which, and oh, Vizio is so smug about this, reveals 3D audio logos. So on the boring, unrotating part of the bar, you have a center left, center, and center right channel. Each are comprised of a two woofer tweeter pair. The JBL bar 9.1 had primarily single woofer tweeter pairs. So what additional intrigue can we find? Let's check out the bottom. Ports. It seems we have another bottom and off to the side port situation, like the Samsung's. Which I really don't get. Too bendy. Though, it seems this bar wins on number of ports. Anyway, on the right, right side, we have your eARC and two HDMI pass-through ports, each supporting 4K 60Hz. On the right, left side, you have a USB connection which supports WAV and MP3 playback. Okay, moving to the left side. We got power on the left left side, and on the left right side, we got an optical port and two auxiliary ports. One of the auxiliary ports are let's say for your phone, you know if it still has a headphone jack, and the other a dedicated voice assistant port that allows you to bring your own voice assistant. Okay, sure, why not? Very accommodating. So while we're checking out the bottom here, we see we have rubber pads for stability, good. Mounting screw holes are in the rubber pads. And we have this reservoir. What the heck is it? There is no accessory in the box that fits this. And there is no mount on the website that might fit this. Well, I lied. There is a mount on the website. It's a bit pricey. It ranges from $1,300 to $2,000. And it's right here. It's specifically designed to be mounted on a Vizio OLED stand. Hmm. So this bar gives you a reason to keep it on if you mount the TV to the wall. Vizio, hats off, you're a weirdo. Okay, let's move on from the butt. The left side of the bar has five 3D clickety-clackety buttons. Power, input, Bluetooth, volume down, and volume up. Okay, I've stalled long enough, the display. Hmm. It's not the most minimal display. That belongs to the Sonos bars for sure but they try to maybe display more information than a minimalist display should be displaying. What a terrific sentence. On the left, you have a 10 LED vertical display and to the right, a single LED to provide just a bit more information. Gonna be honest, very odd. The left column largely handles the representation of volume and various EQ adjustments and sound modes. I'm oversimplifying this. There are seven full pages of how this vertical array of lights communicate levels and state. The companion colored LED to the right provides information on audio codec, so green means Dolby Atmos, white, Dolby, but not Atmos, and amber, DTS. When you establish a Wi-Fi connection, you'll see a blue light. You also have nine other colors to indicate input. So, aux, aux VA, optical, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI eARC, or the TV, Bluetooth, USB, and Chromecast. Yes, this bar supports Chromecast. To help decode this 1960s style display technology, you get a voice giving you various clarifications. HDMI eARC. Okay, moving on to the remote. The big distinguisher here is the display on top that gives you decent information about what you are adjusting. It's pretty good, though I really hate taking on one more remote. Luckily, this remote is not really needed as the Vizio SmartCast app can mimic all of the physical remote's functionality and more. 
Anyway, hope this was a good introduction to the Vizio Elevate. Drop some likes and comments. Subscribe and ring that notification bell. Look for more in-depth videos on this bar in the future. That about wraps it up. Catch you on the next one.